Uh, so, hello. It's, it's, sorry, is it is this thing working? Can you hear me at the back? Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, just one more minute, right? But so, before we proceed, because okay, we are proceeding off to, uh, we're trying to wrap up functions today. Um, so we're going to look at uh, uh, or the return statement, right? Um, and then we'll briefly look at scope. But before we proceed, I just wanted to find out if people have uh, questions with regards to the previous class. Um, remember, we're still looking at parameters, right? Uh, but, but we looked at how, how we, can, we can actually get to define variable position parameters, right? Uh, using uh, the asterisks and the two asterisks, right? And someone, I think, is missing here. Someone, uh, Coined the term quags. I think just just, just to, to put it in context, it's, it's not actually quags. The key W args actually stands for key-weighted arguments, right? So the K is for key, the W is uh, weighted, and then arguments, right? But quags is just fine. Are there any questions, though? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So the, the two nice ladies came up. The people have been shy, but they weren't shy now. They came up and asked that question, which is really nice. Thank you for that. Uh, so it's it, it turns out it's 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 actually it's it's a behavior I wasn't really aware of, and it turns out it actually um, it, it's actually something you get to see uh, in Python Python three. So but before Python three, that that behavior was not there. So there are. There are links that I will share with you um, that actually describe in detail um, why that occurs, right? So it's 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 a sort of behavior that you probably typically expect in in sets and dictionaries, right? Uh, details are in the two links. I will share the links, but it's fine. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, it's normally when um, so when 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 you are trying to use. Uh, more data types or data structures like dictionaries, you, you, you tend to specify the order programmatically as you are implementing whatever it is you're you trying to implement, right? So it really doesn't matter whether or not uh, the, the, the content of the dictionary is, is, is ordered or not. But I think, I think uh, we, we can just try it out as, as, as a class here. I think it should be possible, uh, since this is a dictionary here, it should be possible for us to, um, So for, for those of you who, 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 who might not understand what the question is about, uh, and I, I hope we'll be able to, uh, I hope we'll be able to replicate the behavior, right? Just trying to, to remind ourselves what, so you notice what's happening when, when we run it, so the, the order is not consistent. So um, you notice it's x x x now, um, and then after a couple of runs, it it goes back to you know. But I think uh, I, I could be wrong here, but we will probably sort it or something. I don't know if this uh, uh, thing is going to work here, but you know, I mean, I mean, you can you can do fancy things like this, and it should be able to work anyway, right? But nothing to worry about. It's a uh, that's generally how Python 3 plus behaves, right? Are there any other questions? Oh, yes. Well, I used it here to, to try and emphasize the fact that you can, you can sort things programmatically yourself. You, know, you don't have to rely on Python to actually do it for you. So what we're saying is, um, it's normal for dictionaries and sets to sort of like spit out their contents in random order. You know. Yes. Is that all? Okay. Uh, we, we we also looked at uh, something really interesting. Uh, the, there's someone who had a question. Uh, he's, he's not here, but I suppose we we'll look at it as, as uh, when, when, when you're trying to look at um, an example of functions. But 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 he what he did was he 
he, he kind of like implemented two functions, right? Um, two functions, just quickly. So the guy who coined the word quads, right? So he implemented two functions, right? The, the first function was basically just uh, something that was looping uh, into a, a list of, uh, well, obviously he was using the, the input function to try and, sorry, he was using the input function to try and, uh, to, to try and prompt the user to, to enter input values, right? And then he would print out those input values, right? So it print out the input values, and then what he did was he he actually got the well, he defined another function where he was uh, essentially do doing the things that we we are all aware of now, right? So list essentially just prints out one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then X, what X does is it, uh, I'll, I'll get to why, why we're doing this anyway just now. We know what's happening here, we all know what's happening here, right? But what, what, what he did is, is instead of uh, explicitly feeding it uh, predefined values, he, he was trying to experiment with feeding it uh, the list function that he had defined initially, right? right? But what we discovered was that, and I, I suppose we are, we are both tired, right? What we, what we, what we discovered was that, um, I can't quite remember what he did here. I wish he was here, right? So this is what he was trying to do, right? So he, he oh sorry. So he, he created, uh, so he created, he creates, he creates the list function, right? He creates the list function, um, and, and, and within the list function he defines um, a list, right? And then he loops through, he loops through well, an arbitrary number of, of values, and then he's appending the values to that list, right? And then he, well, uh, finally what he does is he prints out his, his final output, which is like the content that I, in the list, right, the contents in the list. But then, he was, he was trying to see if he could, he could actually use, uh, he was trying to see if he could use the list function as input to the what? To the x function. But he wasn't, but he wasn't getting the output that he was expecting, and the reason is simple, it's because the, the function doesn't have a return type, and we'll get to this example as we proceed to, to, um, Return values just now. Okay, so what what we've been doing, um, so what we've been doing these these last couple of sessions is, uh, it's 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 what you'd probably call primitive because our functions don't they, they don't really get to do anything constructive or anything very valuable, right? We're just printing out. We, we've just been printing out. Um, uh, so printing out strings and 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 return values, right? But what we're trying to do is we're trying to to leverage the fact that functions actually enable us to reuse code, right? And one of the ways in which we are able to reuse code is by what? By trying to uh, use as input outputs that come from other predefined functions, right? And the way that we get to do that is by using the return statement. And again, just to, to try and emphasize the fact that what we're doing here is this syntax, right? Uh, so in the past, we've, we've, we've looked at how, how best we can syntactically uh, uh, so define uh, parameters and, 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 and you know, uh, functional signatures, but we, we, are, we are proceeding further and we're trying to look at the return statement, right? And so what the return statement does is, instead of, instead of just uh, sort of like restricting you to just printing out uh, whatever output you might be interested in, what it does is it, it goes a step further by by actually explicitly 
returning um, a data type, right? So as an example, we have our, well, we're still bidding on the add, 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 add function here. Um, what we did previously was that, if you recall, was would, instead of having a return statement here, we'd have uh, a print statement where we'd, we'd just essentially just uh, print out the summation of A and B, right? But what we're doing is we're using the return statement to actually explicitly tell Python to say, what we're interested in is this function returning an explicit data type that we're interested in, right? And in this case, obviously, if you are, and that's the thing here, what does this function do, by the way? What, what, what is the result of A plus B? What, what data type is that? <laughs> yeah, it could be D, right? But what, what data type is it? <laughs> Anybody? Well, an integer, it could be a, a, a float, it could be a long, it could be anything, right? But, but that's the thing, but what if, what if A and B were strings, right? Then it wouldn't be an integer, right? So and I'm just trying to, to point out the fact that uh, we know, we're on record here, we're on camera, but we know that, um, we know that this thing is, we, we wanted to add two numbers, but what it's doing is not really adding two numbers, because if you feed it strings, it will return strings, right? We understand this, right? Okay. We'll, we'll get back to this, but how, how, how would we, how would we tell it to actually return numbers? By the, to, how, how would we tweak this code to, to tell Python to say what we're interested in is adding two numbers and not strings, by the way? You're saying, could we force them to be integer? Could we force, could we coerce them, right? Could we, well, I don't know. Do, do you think we could? But what, so what he's saying is, are you saying we use eval here? Eval A and eval B. Sorry, oh, int, yeah, int, eval, that's. Yeah, we could, but, yeah, I mean, that, that would work, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, that, that would work. That's, that's one option, I suppose. That's one option. Yeah. Okay, great. Anyway, so the return statement, right? So again, uh, just to point out the fact that return statement is one of the 33, at least in Python 3, one of the 33 keywords, right? And we know the implications for this. We cannot use return as um, a name of the variable as a function name, right? So what return does is it explicitly tells Python to say what? Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to, instead of printing out garbage or whatever it is you're doing, I want you to return this data type, right? In this case, it's, it could be returning a string or a number, but we want you to return a number, right? right? Um, and what the return statement does, in addition to that, is you can, you can arbitrarily use it anywhere within, um, within your, your, your functional definition, right? Except that, except that, So you can you can pretty much uh, you can pretty much use it anywhere anywhere within your your method definition, except what happens is anything that appears after the return statement is, is essentially ignored by the Python interpreter, right? Uh, so you notice that sorry. So you notice that what, what, what our function is doing here, and, and perhaps we should actually print it seeing as it's returning a value here. Uh, so a couple of things happening here. We've defined our function, and we're telling Python to say, so the first thing we're doing in the second line is we're telling it to just print, print out a message, right? And then we're telling Python to say, we want you to return uh, A plus B, right? Assuming there are numbers, we're saying return the sum of A and B. And then immediately after the return statement, what we're subsequently telling Python is to say, print out this string, right? But you'll notice that when we evoke the function, 
it's, it's not printing out line number four, right? And that's, and that's because what Python does is once it comes across the return statement, it's, it, it, it essentially returns and it just breaks out of that uh, uh, functional definition and does not you know, execute anything that comes uh, after that. The same sort of behavior that you'd get from which statements do we know here? Sorry? Break what else? The continuous statement, right? Right, so if, if you're in a loop, uh, when, when Python comes across a continuous statement, it will not, um, yeah. Um, Sorry? Oh. You want us to use the int here? Can we hash this out so that we we try and get a sense of what is strings? Yeah. We know what we are doing here, right? We are coercing, right? He's saying, "What if we feed?" Uh, oh, sorry, you want in the evocation, right? Okay. What do you suppose will happen here, by the way? Sorry. Uh, sorry, if, if you maybe maybe you are trying to lead us to. I'm trying to figure out what uh, what you what you are expecting here. There's so there's, a, there's a couple of ways of. Sorry, you. Is this is, is this fine? No, no, no. Okay, all right. When we get to exceptions, by the way, we, we'll figure out, we'll, we'll actually realize that there's, there's a better way of trying to, to avoid these sort of errors, right? Um, so you can, you, can, you can, before you actually come up with your implementation, you can, you can anticipate what sort of errors your function or your classes or whatever it is you're implementing could potentially get into, right? So you can avoid those by using, by using exceptions, right? And you, you, could, you could also pretty much avoid, uh, so you could also pretty much, what, what do you think, just quickly here, what, what do you think if we wanted to, to be, what, what would we do if we actually wanted Python to, to just, I'm curious here, if, if, we wanted, if we wanted this to actually return, you know, the result of adding two numbers and not strings, what would we do? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this. So this, this, this would probably. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this would probably work, right? But, but I was thinking. I mean, you could, you could use. Can't you use like a conditional statement here, an if else, if else statement? Don't you think you would do that? You know, to try and avoid the error, right? I mean, if uh, if a is uh, if a is what? Sorry. Come on, we just did this, like, uh, these things, like, I think about three sessions, four sessions away. <laughs> how, how, would you, how would you check? How would we check if something is actually a number? If what? I don't know. <laughs> what does type return, by the way? It's, it's, so this is this is brilliant. I, I didn't actually think of using type here, and I here I am. I I've been persistently using the the, the type uh, method, but I, I didn't actually think about using type. But you could use type. Don't know. I mean, you'd have to check if type is what. If it's an int, if it's a float, what else? Well, I mean, for now we can stick to uh, float. But there's there's something else you could do, right? <laughs> so, 
I, I, so sorry. By the way, are we are we using are we are we going to use? Um, and we are still in functions. We haven't forgotten yet, but we're trying to to understand this. We still have x as our function here. I know what you're thinking, right? But uh, just a, a question: Is it would would and or or make a, I mean make sense? What makes sense there? Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. And somebody knows what we're doing here, right? So, so I mean, this is, this is how I would probably do it, right? This is how I would do it. Uh, I would have my funny definition there. Let's remove this. This is uh, deceiving here. This is how I'd probably go about doing it, right? Uh, uh, come on. Why? This is how I would do it. We're trying to, to make sure that. Right. Uh, so this is how I'd go about doing it, right? I mean, uh, I know that number seven, evoking my function uh, by issuing line number seven works, but it's not returning anything. And we know this because instead of what we've been doing before, what we're doing now is we're telling Python to say, return the value, right? Don't print out, we're not printing out anything, just return the value, right? But we're seeing this, uh, this, this output here because our second evocation statement actually leads us into the what? The else portion of our if, if, if else statement here, right? If else condition. Do you understand what's going on now? Is this, this makes sense, right? So you, 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 see, you see what sort of, do you see, do you see how, so do, do you see how powerful, uh, what do you call this, the return statement is? Uh, can you see now? The fact that, the fact that what, what our function is doing now is it's, it's, it's not just printing out, it's not just printing out uh, arbitrary output, but it's returning a value. And we know that when, when it returns a value, what we could do with that value is we can assign it to a variable, right? And things start getting interesting and exciting when you can do those things, right? Because what you can do is you can, you can create generic functions and then use the output of those generic functions that you are creating as input to arbitrary values, values that you'd, you'd subsequently create and then use values to perform any other computation, right? Yes? Um, if, if we said, we said, like, with the return statement, if we said print, then we put return, it would just go back. Uh, you mean if we, if we said? Like, after we say print, then I can see how this is return A plus B. No, the return statement has to stand on its own. So it's, it's, it's all about the syntax, people. And I, again, it's syntax. He's it's asking if, he's asking if, He's asking if if we had uh, if we had a, a, if if we had excuse me, if we wrapped if we wrapped this statement into into our print line method would it work would it work no it wouldn't right The return statement has to uh, stand on its own, right? All right. Okay. So this makes sense, I hope, right? So there's there's more, right? Uh, like we 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 now already know that anything that comes after a return statement within our method definition or the body of the method is essentially ignored by the Python interpreter, right? Nothing happens to that, right? Very important point. Uh, something to take into account when you're implementing your functions, of course. Otherwise, you turn into, uh, you, you end up experiencing logical errors, right? Um, and then, of course, we can, we can reuse uh, the output that we get to functions by assigning them to variables, right? 
Another important thing, uh, when, whenever you use the return keyword or the, the return statement within your method, within your method body, uh, one thing to bear in mind is it, it, only, it only ever returns one value, right? So you can, it, it can never return more than two values. You know what I mean? Uh, so if, if let's say you, you are performing, uh, well, so you have a function that takes in two numbers as input and what you're trying to do is you're trying to, to return both the, the summation and let's say the, the result when you divide those two numbers. You, you can't explicitly tell Python to say you want to return those two, two different outputs as, as independent entities, right? But what you could do is you could, you could implicitly tell Python to say you want them to be returned as, as tuples, right? By separating them using commas, right? Uh, so what, what we're trying to say here is if, if, we, wanted to, if we wanted to return both the, the addition and let's say uh, the result of uh, multiplying A and B, would, would have to essentially just separate the, the summation and the, the, the product of A and B by a comma, right? And what, what Python does in that case is, is that, right? So it, it returns, you notice that it, it's, it's returning our, it's returning the, the, the two values that we're separating by commas in a tuple, all right? Is this making sense? Yeah? Okay. So if we were to go back to our example, right? Uh, just, just try, we're trying to make sure that we, we understand what's going on here, by the way. If we're trying to go back to our summation example when we're adding two, two numbers or arbitrary numbers, let's, let's say we, we, wanted to, we wanted to write a function that returns the sum of, of adding like a random, a random list of numbers, right? Let's say a hundred numbers, for instance. How would we go about implementing this function and reusing the return statement if we trying to see if we understand what we just spoke about here? How would we do this? It's th the only minor change you would have to do is remember we, we had uh, the implementation before, right? The only minor thing we'd have to do to our implementation is what? Just a minute here. So remember that what, what we, and there's a lady who sits somewhere up there who actually told us how to do this. Remember that previously what, what we had instead of the return statement was we had a print line statement that was just printing out the, the result of, of adding what? Of adding anything that that we want to, to feed our x parameter, right? But what we're saying is that if, if, we, wanted to, if we wanted to use, if we, we instead wanted to explicitly tell Python to say we want, we, want, we want to return the actual data type, then all we'd have to do is replace line number five with the return statement, right? And so what we're doing is we are returning what? We are returning the sum here, right? But this has huge implications, obviously. We know that what, what we are returning here now is, is what? It's a data type, and so when, when we evoke the function, it doesn't print out anything. We have to explicitly tell Python to print it out, or otherwise assign a variable to the result of our function, right? So just, just, just to see people if, if just, just, just to try and see if we really, you know, understand the implications of of doing this. If if we said we wanted to calculate or to implement the average of um, the average of uh, a random list of numbers, how would we go about doing this? And reusing the 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 function that we've already implemented here. I mean, we know that the average is what 
the average of five numbers is the, the sum of those numbers divided by five, right? So how, how would we go about implementing this? Any takers? No one? So when, when people are quiet, it's either things are not making sense or or maybe they are easy, right? <laughs> okay, simple question. How how would we compute the average of of an arbitrary list of numbers? Yes. Yeah. So someone once told me when I when I first do it, when when I first started doing this that, that was like many years ago. Um, I, I really struggled with Java because I started out with Java. And someone told me something that never made sense until after a good number of years. They told me that the well programming is easy because it's logic, right? Everybody is inher er, inherently born, you know, with ability to reason logically. And something else they told me was that probably the, the most you ever get to do is is, is try and think about the appropriate solutions to the problems that you encounter. Right? The, the syntax is easy and simple. You don't have to memorize. The, the things that you have to remember are very few. You don't have to memorize anything because the documentation is there, right? But the hardest part is what? Trying to come up with a sol solution. So thinking, the thinking no one can think for you, right? Uh, so what he's, what he's saying is that we can, we can modify this, right? And you're saying we have a, a counter, right? OK, what, 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 do, do we remember what this counter is? What, what, what name is given to this counter, by the way? Nobody remembers. Uh, is, this, is this what you wanted us to do? Right? Yes. And, and so re returning our. You're saying re returning our average is as easy as that, is it? Right? Fair enough. But, but here's, here's, here's an interesting thing, right? Uh, we know that the average of uh, well, 10 and 20 is 15, right? We, 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 we want to, to see if people understand what's going on here. Here's the thing, right? How, seeing as we've, we've done this, how, how now would we, remember what we said about, about being able to, to reuse um, existing implementations? So we already have an implementation in the form of what? Add n, right? We can already add an arbitrary number of what? Of values, right? But what we, what we are doing here is we are, we are computing the, the average of well, another arbitrary set of values. But how can we now reuse the, so how can we reuse the function that we just implemented to add a random set of numbers into this? Because we know that sum can literally be replaced by what? By our summation implementation, right? So how would we reuse this, uh, I mean, the, the previous implementation into this now? Sorry? Oh, it's a question. OK. Uh, so that's the thing, right? <laughs> the, the point is uh, the, so excuse me. The point is, uh, and I was hoping someone would, would actually provide an answer. The point is reuse, right? What, so what, what the print does is, all it does is it, 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 it spits out output for you. You can't, there's no easy way of, of you reusing that. Of course, you could easily manipulate whatever it is you're implementing to, to reuse the output, right? But, but there's no easier way of making use of something that just prints out 
statements, right? I'm trying to understand here. Here's the thing. Uh, excuse me. Here's the thing. You have you have A and B, right? You're trying to. You have A and B. You have you have A and B, right? If if I was if I were to ask it was away. If I were to ask you, uh, if, I, if if I were to ask you, what the difference between between this and well, uh -huh, between line number four and line number five is. What, what, if I was to ask you what the advantage of having line number four and five is, what would you tell me? Sorry. Exactly, you can reuse number five, right? It's, it's, it's really hard for you to reuse number four. I mean, they're all doing the same thing, right? You can print out C immediately after well, line number five there. But then the, the power with line number five is you can later on reuse C. I mean, you can use C to do a number of things here, right? So my, my question is, how, how then can we, can we apply this to functions? I can lecture the traditional way, but I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to make this more interactive so that people learn, right? For those of you who don't understand what's going on, yes. Okay. Um, no, I, I don't think I can remember that. What, what were we trying to do? Okay, that's fine. No, but it is. It's fine. It's fine. But it, it is. But what, what I'm what I'm saying is, why, why do we have to, why do why do we have to redo this? Why do we have to redo this when we can? Why do we have to do this when we can do this? What, what, what do you suppose is, I mean, what are the obvious benefits of having, of having what we just did here? And I, and I know this is a very simple example, but, but remember what we've been doing with functions like, like math.square root, right? Imagine, imagine the horror would have to go through if if all we had to do every time we wanted to, to reuse math.square root, if every time we had to do that, we had to provide our own implementation of math.square root, right? It would be insane, right? But, but what we're saying is that by, by, by doing what we just did in line number nine, we are reusing something that already exists. And the way that we are reusing it is by what? We are assigning the result of evoking the add n function to our sum function is in line number nine, right? I, I, I hope I hope we understand what's going on, now. right? Right. All right. So just just to wrap up on 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 some of the on the things that we've done on in in, in functions actually just just to wrap up. Let, let's remind ourselves that. 
Number one, there are certain core, core elements that make up a function, right? Um, and we, we remember from the previous lecture that we said that if, you've, if you view a function from a very high level, you know that it has a function signature and a what? A body, right? That's number one. Um, we, we know what makes up our function signature, right? The name and the parameter listing, right? Um, but we also know, we also know that our, our function, the entire functional definition actually has certain core elements that are man mandatory or required and some of them that are optional, right? What, what aspects of this, what aspect of, of a functional definition is, is optional? And which ones are, let's start with the required entities, right? What's, what's required? What, what do we absolutely have or need to have when we're defining a function? Name and brackets. So he's saying uh, the simplest possible function that we could ever define is something that has a name and brackets, right? Do, do, you, think, do you think this would make sense, by the way? Name, function name, and brackets, and define. So you mean this? OK, fine, uh, fair enough. Uh, do you think this would work then? I don't think so. What's, what's the simplest? So what, what, what's, what, what, are the, what are the core elements that make up a function? The function signature, of course, what we are, well, the name, the, thank you, the parentheses and the optional parameter list, and the, the def uh, keyword, right? But at, at an absolute minimum, you should have at least something in the functional body, right? Uh, perhaps this or something. I mean, it does nothing, but at least you have something that would, you know. <laughs> so the simplest possible function that you would have is something that does nothing, absolutely nothing, right? Uh, let's just remind ourselves that this is uh, something to think about here. Functional body, uh, 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 functional signature, um, the core elements or mandatory elements are the def keyword, the functional name, right? Um, the opening and closing parentheses, right? The return statement is option, obviously, because clearly we just used his example and we can see that a function actually works with having the simplest possible statement that you could have. We just printed out a value. You could uh, feed it pass, for instance, the pass keyword if you wanted to, right? So scope. If there are no questions with uh, functions, scope. Uh, so we, we we remember from from one of the uh, from from one of the early lectures by Professor Berman that 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 this 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 whole notion aspect of scope is really very important, right? Uh, but what we what we need to bear in mind is that. Uh, uh, and by the way, scope scope essentially just means uh, the the section the section within any code constructs or any code construct within which uh, a particular variable is visible, right? So, for instance, if you have your your module file a dot a dot py file, uh, and you define variables, those variables that you define the global variables that you define within that module within that module file are visible within that module and any other modules that import that module, right? But everything changes when you look at functions because a variable that you define within a function only has local scope within the functional body. All right, so A as an example here is only visible within the print fx function, right? If you had another function that if you had another function defined, uh, let me just do this. Just to, to, to try and emphasize the fact that uh, A is only A is only visible within that function. If we, if we were to try, if, if we attempted to print A here, there would be an error because, because the scope of A, the lifetime, A's sole purpose in life is just to exist within that functional body. There's nowhere else that A would be visible in, right? On the other hand, yes. 
If you if you what? Yeah. Yeah, but you're saying if we define it here and we try to modify it inside. Yeah, so so that's the thing, right? Uh, so that's the thing. The, 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 the fundamental difference between uh, his question is, his question is if, if, well, A in line number one obviously has global scope within our unnamed.py function, right? But A in line number four has local scope within the X function. So his question is, if we modified A within our function block, would we, have, would we be able, what, what, what output would we see in line number six? Zero, right? Because what we're saying is that our A that we have defined in line number four only exists within our functional body. Does that make sense? If, if we print this, we'll, we'll see zero here. Right? But but there are, but there are tricks that we can there are tricks that we can use. And even though it doesn't really make sense for you to I mean for you to, to actually start modifying things that you've defined within a functional body because I mean the the reason why you define variables in the first place in a functional body is because you, you want to manipulate those variables within that functional body, right? But but if it but if it but if it so happens that you want <laughs> if you want to, to actually turn A into a global variable, uh, there's another keyword that you can use, right? Global. So you just use the global keyword. Uh, before you start packing and going, please, uh, you can sneak out if you want to, but if we can, we can do that, right? We can use the global keyword, right? And what the global keyword does is it explicitly tells Python to say, Whatever, whatever comes after, my, after the global keyword, I want it to be visible everywhere, right? So this changes, this changes what we have here because when we print it out now, uh, what, what, uh, excuse me, what would be A? Eh? It makes sense, right? Yeah. Sorry? Uh, people are leaving, yeah. Sorry? Uh, sorry, excuse me, there's a question. Uh, and what we're going to do is, uh, whether you like it or not, his question is going to be in the test, yes. Yeah? Yeah? You're saying line number four what? If what? If I hash it out. <laughs> Thanks, I was expecting that question, right? And he, he, but the reason he's saying this is probably he thinks it's a trick, I was playing a trick on him, but, but here's what happens. Ah, is that what you were expecting? Yeah, hi. I asked the lady who actually told us about the, um, she, she observed the random, thank you, the random dictionary thing, right? Thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> oh, fine, if you can come down, it's fine. People, uh, yeah. Uh, but where were you hiding? I saw you. And, uh, excuse me, can I, can I just do a, a, his example? Because I just saw him right now. You're not going anywhere. Just let me just finish this, please. Fine, it's fine. I'll, I'll look at it. Uh, can I use your example with, for those who are around? Uh, it's here. I, I have it here, right? 